Hey everybody, it's Delta Shiny Zeta here, and today I will be covering how to play the game known as Cat Crimes, Who's to Blame Logic Game. So basically this game did come out several years ago, uh, and it's unique in my channel because it's a single player game. I don't think I've actually covered any single player games yet, but yeah, recommended for ages 8 to adult, single player, and it says 40 crimes to solve, beginner, to all the way to expert level. It's a logic game, as uh, you know, the front cover kind of shows you, but this is how it looks in the back. So let's go ahead and cover how to actually play this game. So upon opening the box, you're going to see a couple things. The very first thing you might actually see is going to be the instruction little booklet, how to play. Obviously, we don't need to look at that because I'm doing a how to play video. The next thing is that you'll actually see, it's actually a really nice piece, but it's a, uh, it's a dinner table. It's pretty like bulky. And it's like a two-piece thing almost like it came like this you know so this one's basically going to be the middle of your playing area you're also going to have six different cats now if you are just opening the box for the first time your box may not look like this in fact what's going to happen is it's going to look like all these cats are going to be in sheets and you have to punch them out one by one but obviously i've already covered you know this game i've like played it before so yeah it's not new but yeah you're going to find these six of them as you can see, pretty nice. So I'm just going to want to lay down the six over here. You're also going to find six of these little stand pieces. Once again, these will also be in a sheet. You have to punch out of this your first time playing. So these are actually optional. Uh, you can play with or without them, but if you want to play with them, it's for standing purposes. So you basically can use this on any of your, you know, your, your cats and you just put it right there. It's a little stand, so that way you can stand them up. You can also play them, play the game when they're flat. So again, it doesn't really matter. Um, for the purposes of this playthrough, I'm not really gonna use them because I feel like I don't need to use them. So I'm just gonna grab these and put them all on the side over here for now. The next thing is going to be these little chip pieces. Uh, once again, these are going to be in a sheet as well. So there's six of them. I'm gonna go ahead and take out all these. And the last thing should be this little box that says cat crimes and I'm going to remove this from here. So this little box actually contains cards. If you flip the top over here, you're going to go ahead and get to the cards. These will be completely sealed inside if it's your first time opening the game. I'm going to move this box over here. Okay. So as far as the setup goes, all you really want to do is go ahead and grab this giant dinner table and you're going to place it right there in the middle, just like that. You're then going to take these six cats and you can just you kind of like lay them out on the side just so you can see what you're working with. It does help. I am actually going to move this a little more to the right. There we go. That way you can see what you're working with. And then you're going to have these uh, six chips here and just go ahead and lay them again next to the next to the table. And that's the setup. All you're going to be doing is essentially playing the game now and you get to pick which card so you're not going to shuffle these um you're not going to do that the way this works is that there's two sides so there's this side that has a bunch of little bullet points and then there's this side over here that has a picture of the dinner table so you'll also notice that there's four types of cards the green is beginner yellow is intermediate blue is advanced and red is expert so the goal of winning this game essentially is trying to figure out which of the cats is the one that committed the quote-unquote crime. Every single card that you play with is going to be a different game in itself and because it goes all the way up to 40 as you can see the number there 40 one they're all numbered uh, there's 40 different games that you can actually play. So let's go ahead and just use this first one as an example number one when you choose a card just go ahead and put all the others from the side I'll just put them over here and we've officially chosen to play this one. So we're gonna play the game. So the way it works is that you take a look at this icon over here, and all you're going to do is find a chip that corresponds with that icon. So that one's actually shoes. Um, so that means what I'm going to do here is look through them. There it is, these right here. And what you're going to do is find a corresponding item on the dinner table, but on the dinner table, it will always be the non-crime version, meaning no cat has caused disaster yet. But with this, you can see that a cat has caused disaster. There we go. Place it right on top. So there's one for each. There's this one, which is the pot. The flower pot goes right here. This is the pot. Do the bird cage, right there. The bird cage will be this one here. The fish bowl. Oh, it's a little glary. There we go. Fish bowl's right over here. There's a coffee spill. 
and there's a ball of yarn that's been messed up right there. So that's how they correspond, but again for the sake of this game we only need the shoes so we're going to put the rest away. There we go. Okay. The way this works is that you have to try and figure out which cat was the one that actually caused this right here. Basically the cat that's going to be in front. So let's take a look at the card here and see how to play this. You're going to be looking at the bullet points one at a time and gaining clues to know how to actually figure out who did what. Now the beginner ones are incredibly simple, like incredibly easy. So let's take a look at this one. Mr. Mittens and Pipsqueak were upstairs sleeping. This is the dinner table. If any cat is upstairs sleeping, as an example, they're not actually going to be involved. So that means you can remove Mr. Mittens and Pipsqueak. We'll look over here, Mr. Mittens, Pipsqueak, those are not involved. So we know it's not them two. Second one, Tom Cat was sitting in front of the catnip and sock. So we take a look at this. Let me actually bring it closer. The catnip and sock. So we see a sock here. We see a catnip here and a sock here, which means it must be here. So there's different areas. Basically, there's six different areas. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. You can actually figure this out pretty easily by looking at the instructions to see where the placement of cats can actually be. Right here. See those playing areas? There are the six playing areas right there, and each one is in front of one of the items that has a corresponding chip to it. But, going back to the card, we do know, again, that Tomcat was sitting in front of the catnip and sock. So we're going to go ahead and take Tomcat. Tomcat was sitting right here. We know it's the catnip and the sock. So we know it's not. It's not um, Tomcat. Nice one. Sassy was sitting across from Tomcat. Let's get Sassy. Sitting across means on the other side of the table, which means that Sassy was in front of the coffee. The next one. Ginger was sitting next to the fishbowl. The fishbowl is right here. Next two could mean here or here, but we don't actually know. And then uh, Duchess was sitting uh, was sitting to the left of Sassy. So if Sassy's over here, this means to the left of Sassy from Fast Sassy's perspective would be here, because that's the left, which means that by default Ginger should be here because we know Ginger's next to the fishbowl. And that's, her, that's what we are guessing. Once you believe you have the correct answer, once you've locked it in, you can flip the card over to see how this works. So, is Ginger in front of the yarn? Yes. Here we have Tomcat in front of the plant. Sassy in front of the coffee. There we go. And then finally we have uh, Duches, which is in front of the, the uh, shoes. And there we go. So the Guilty Cat is in fact that one and it matches where we went ahead and put. Which means that we did it. We did it. So that's it. That's essentially how you play the game. Again, beginner is actually really easy. It's like they're practically handing it to you. Uh, but as a little example, I could show you one more. Let's do, let's say, um, I'm going to go ahead and get an intermediate. We're going to choose number 11 intermediate. Sorry, I'm not showing it on screen yet. Let's grab it. Here we go. Okay, so for this one, it's the birdcage. What you want to do is go ahead and find the birdcage. It's right here. And we know that's the one we're trying to find. Okay, there we go. Tomcat and Mr. Mittens were upstairs sleeping. Well, that's a good start. Tomcat and Mr. Mittens. Mr. Mittens is sleeping again. Wow. Okay, so that's the two of them that are gone. No cat was sitting in front of the fishbowl. So we have to remember there's no cat here at all. No cat. Ginger was not sitting next to any cats. Okay. Sassy was sitting between two cats. Duchess was sitting near claw marks. Okay. And the last one, Pipsqueak was sitting in front of either the, the bell bowl and paw print or the catnip and claw marks. Okay. So we know, uh, I guess there's a lot of stuff you have to try to try and figure out. So if Duchess was sitting next to claw marks, there's a claw mark here and there's a claw mark here. Let's assume Duchess was here. There we go. This means that if we go ahead and take a look at another one, let's say Ginger. Ginger was not sitting next to any cats and then Sassy was sitting between two cats. So if we know that Ginger was not sitting next to any cats and Sassy was between two cats, because Duchess is here, this means that Sassy is going to have to be either here or here. But we know that there's no cat that was actually sitting next to the fishbowl. So we're going to go ahead and place Sassy here, logically. 
Um, this also does mean that Ginger, because Ginger was not sitting next to any cats, Ginger has to be either here or here, because we know that he can't be here. And so, the last one is Pesqui. Pesqui was sitting in front of either the bell ball and paw print or the catnip and claw marks. So the catnip and claw marks is right over here, which is already has deuces in it. Or the second one, the paw print, or sorry, bell ball and paw print, which is right here. If we put Pipsqueak here, we know for a fact that that's not going to work, right? Because Ginger cannot be sitting next to any cats, which means that solution is not, we didn't do it right. What we can do then is move you over here. And then, by default, this means that we can actually put Pipsqueak here. Sassy um, is sitting in between two, and then we can go ahead and put Ginger here, right? Uh, hopefully you followed, but let's, let's go ahead and review them all if I did this right. No cat was sitting in front of the, the fishbowl. That's correct. It's right there. Ginger was not sitting next to any cats. Sassy was sitting between two cats. Tuches was sitting uh, near claw marks, which is right over there. Pipsqueak was sitting in front of either the bell ball and print or the catnip and claw marks. So that's the catnip and claw marks, which means I believe we can lock this in. Let's see if we have it right. Do we have it right? Yes, we do. Look at that. Ginger, Duchess, Sassy, Pipsqueak. There we go. Yeah, so that was intermediate. They get even harder. So that's essentially how you play the game. You can just keep playing and playing. There's 40 different games. Uh, the game does suffer from eventually from re uh, replayability because eventually you're going to know the solutions if you play a lot. But you can of course have a new person play the game while you maybe watch or something. But overall, it's fun for what it does. It is a logically based game, so it's pretty cool, you know. But that's about it for the game. So hopefully, I taught you how to play the game. So before I end this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and turn on those notifications if you enjoyed the video. I will see you all later. Bye bye, everyone. Have a great day.